This bulletin proudly brought to you in association with Alex Campbell's menswear. Tonight on the South Today, more than 70 firefighters are struggling to control a large fire in the Mackenzie country. Public transport users are being strongly encouraged to wear face coverings as part of the fight against COVID-19. And Dunedin's armed offenders squad swooped on Mosgiel after a young man allegedly made threats to shoot police. Kia ora, good evening. I'm Simon Anderson. Despite warnings last week from Fire and Emergency New Zealand, a large fire has been burning near Twizel since midday Sunday. 19 aircraft, along with more than 70 firefighters on the ground, have been trying to contain this massive blaze in the Bone Dry Mackenzie district. Mid South Canterbury Principal Rural Fire Officer Rob Hand says while the warm north wind is challenging, they feel lucky this didn't happen in February. It's happened now when there, are, there is some moisture in the ground. Uh, the northwest wind is a challenge for us in regard to aircraft operating. If we're getting uh, you know, 40 k's of wind, we'll be struggling to fly and bucket. So that's why we want to focus on it this morning. The aircraft lifted it just after seven. They took some uh, thermal footage of the uh, around the properties. They identified where the hot spots are, and then we got the crews in there to uh, to deal with those. A 25-person incident management team has been established in Twizel, led by Fens, including staff from the local council and the Department of Conservation. It's believed the fire started when a cooking stove fell over in, at the grassy area near Mount Cook Road on State Highway 80 off Dusky Trail. Strong winds fanned flames of an out-of-control vegetation fire in Oamaru this morning. Helicopters struggled for control amidst gales as they fought the fire on the outskirts of Oamaru. The fire in Reservoir Road, which started just before 10am, had spread to a stretch of pine trees in the Glen Warren Reserve. Fire crews from Oamaru, Weston, Glenvie and Waitakere Rural attended the scene. A command unit from Dunedin was also sent to assist with controlling the blaze. The fire was brought under control by early afternoon. It's now compulsory to wear a face mask on public transport as the nation continues to fight the COVID-19 virus. Most of New Zealand is at alert level 2, with Auckland downgrading to what the Prime Minister calls 2.5. Bus passengers in Dunedin today acknowledge it's for the greater good. The new masked reality in the time of COVID-19. As of Monday, anyone aged 12 or over must wear a mask while using public transport across New Zealand. Frequent bus traveller and public transport advocate Alex King says being in a confined space like the inside of a bus can put yourself at risk. Um, well, we think it's a good idea to to make sure that there isn't an outbreak that's related, that's this linked to the buses. You know, it, you know, um, there is a certain amount of risk about travelling on public transport uh, because you're in a in a closed and you know um, uh, confined space. Dunedin users were ready to comply with the new rules with some people masking before the rules came into place. A friend of mine dropped me off two masks so it saved me from having to um, go into town and get some. But having said that, I may need to buy a few more just to be on the safe side. Oh, I've seen 100% compliance, which is, I'm amazed at. So far, so good. And with Auckland going from level three to level two today, what worries me is how long before it's down here. So might as well wear the mask on public transport and in public. But I'm glad I do have one now. You know, it's a bit iffy at the moment because there, I don't know if there are any cases in the South Island. Still don't know if there are, but I mean, everything helps, you know. Some say they'd prefer not to be wearing masks, but understand the government's reasons for making them compulsory on public transport. I'm, I'm going to be honest with you, I'm not happy about wearing it, but you have to follow the laws. If it's around, it's supposed to be what we're doing, and yeah, I think so. so. I think it's more about educating people that this is the way it's got to be now. Only those who have a medical condition which prevents them from wearing a mask, or children under the age of 12, are exempt from the rule. Though the government says it'll be taking an educational rather than a punitive approach to the issue.
in Dunedin, Lascelles today. Armed police arrested two people in Mosgiel this afternoon after following a threat to shoot police. Officers flooded into Mosgiel after reports a man threatened to shoot police inside Countdown. A witness told the Otago Daily Times the man was laughing, saying he had a gun while threatening to shoot police. After an hour-long manhunt, the man and woman were apprehended by police in Memorial Park. About six police cars and a dog unit were involved in the search. Police say the man was charged with possession of an offensive weapon. A Dunedin dad will be going nude for a good cause in September. Every day next month, Julian Cox will be riding his mountain bike up Signal Hill at least three times a day in a bid to raise funds for charity. Dunedin man Julian Cox plans on raising $30,000 for cystic fibrosis. He'll be riding his bike three times a day up Signal Hill, climbing an average of one vertical kilometre every day for each of the 30 days of September. He says his main motivation is because he has a daughter with cystic fibrosis. Well, we've received a lot of assistance from Cystic Fibrosis New Zealand and they're going through a hard time at the moment because of COVID. It means that we can't do the normal fundraising because the Cystic Fibrosis community is very vulnerable. Um, and it's just a, a real opportunity to, to give back some of the things that we've received from the community. Back in January, he and his wife cycled from Dunedin to Wellington Parliament, towing a coffin in a campaign to have pharmaceutical funding increased. We've got this new drug, Trikafta, that's uh, becoming available around the world and we're really pushing to have it here in New Zealand. It's an amazing drug and we're keen to see people with cystic fibrosis have access to it, so it's a great time to raise publicity and awareness for, for um, getting action on that through Pharmac. And if people are generous enough, he's promising to ride the final lap up Signal Hill completely starkers. So the goal is to raise $30,000 for cystic fibrosis and I've pledged that if I manage to get to that goal with everybody's help, I will ride the last lap completely naked from the bottom of Signal Hill to the top and back down again, including the jumps line. So that should be interesting for everyone concerned. The Sweat for CF webpage has a number of people raising funds for the charity including Julian Cox's sponsor page called RIP Kiwi. In Dunedin, the South Today. Still to come on the South Today. There's more fire in the South, this time in Matoda, and the North Otago rugby team fought valiantly to wrestle Ranfurly Shield from Christchurch, but was it enough to get them over the line? See you after the break. A poorly maintained heat pump can lose up to 35% of its output. The Mr. Heat Pump Cleaner team are experts. Their specially developed chemical wash is totally biodegradable. Call Mr. Heat Pump Cleaner and get the job done by the professionals. Wrens are Otago's painting, tiling and plastering experts. Offering a free measure and quote, Wrens is a name you can trust to get the job done right. Call Wrens today on 477-9384 or visit wrens.co.nz. If you're at risk of developing melanoma skin cancer, you owe it to yourself to have a mole map. Mole map is coming to your area. Phone today to make an appointment. It could save your life. Pet Cremations knows that losing a pet is like losing a family member and we have many special ways for you to keep their memory dear to your heart. From caskets, remembrance pendants to remembrance spheres, call Heaven Sent Pet Cremations today. Do you know Youth Grow in North East Valley? It's an awesome plant nursery where young people can work and learn life skills. You can now order your vegetable seedlings, herbs, bulbs and shrubs over the phone or by email. 
Either pick up your order on Norwood Street in North East Valley, or they can deliver to you. Look for Youth Grow Garden Centre on Facebook or visit youthgrow.org.nz. Happy gardening! Garador Dunedin, delivering quality, stylish garage doors in Dunedin for over 17 years. New doors, replacement doors and maintenance are all part of Garador's quality service. Garador Dunedin offers a full range of modern quality doors to suit any home. Come visit the team. You've seen us in the street, now find us online. Check out shopon.org.nz. We have all sorts of treasures, from retro and vintage clothing to antiques, homewares and accessories. New items added every week. We're open 24-7. Every reason, every season, we're proud to dress the region. Alex Campbell Menswear, it fits. No minor, welcome back. A fire at the old paper mill in Matoda poses no risk to the potentially toxic waste stored there. Fire and Emergency New Zealand says the fire is at the hydro outfall, which is a separate building from where the waste is stored. More than 30 firefighters were employed to contain the blaze. Fenn says access to the site was difficult, as only a small manhole was available while they waited for a caretaker to arrive. It's thought approximately 8,500 tonnes of waste are stored at the mill, with the potential of generating toxic gas when wet. The first game of this year's Heartland Rugby Ranfurly Shield was held bete between Canterbury and North Otago on Friday. More than a dozen supporters travelled up to Christchurch and were allowed into the grounds to watch in their own little bubble. More than a dozen North Otago rugby supporters made their way up to Christchurch for Friday's Ranfurly Shield match against Canterbury. Supporters Club President Ralph Davies says they were pleased to be allowed in as their own little bubble to watch the game. First Shield challenge for the 2020 interrupted season. A uh, bit of a strange affair with no crowd, um, just a few invited uh, people like a supporters club. By half time the strong Canterbury side had scored 45 points to nil, but North Otago came back into the game and did well in the second half. Canterbury came out to play as we knew they would, very fast, slick, um, play the game at pace and just too much for us, especially in that first half. The our guys came back well. In the end the game saw Canterbury beat North Otago 71 to 7. To our guys, well played. Canterbury looking very good for the season. We're looking forward to the trip back home and the rest of our season. The North Otago Supporters Club normally makes at least one trip away each year. In Christchurch, the South today. Tonight we bring you another excerpt from Channel 39's You Choose 2020 series. In this instalment we ask local party representatives just how easy or difficult is it to talk openly about cannabis. It's been really difficult, uh, but it's been really cool that we're having this conversation. Uh, there's been a lot of um, myths and fallacies around cannabis, especially around harm and the people who are using it, and there's not been so much talk around the racist criminalisation of cannabis, which is something I'm really interested in talking about. Look, I think the conversation has been really good. Not all of it has been very well informed, and I think people do need to do as much research as they can from reliable sources to get a balanced view about the pros and cons of uh, legalising. Seeing internationally what's happening, uh, that's actually made it much, much more uh, able to, to speak about it. Something that took a while for me myself um, to kind of work through uh, the, the, the data um, of what actually affects cannabis has, and especially what happens when legalisation happens or doesn't happen. So it has changed an awful lot, and I'm, I, I'm glad that we're having a national conversation about it, um, because that's really important so that we can actually understand the harms and all the benefits there. Well, yeah, I think the referendum's given us a good opportunity to start having the conversation. Um, and regardless of what side you're on, I think it's an important aspect of any major social issue like this to be talking about the pros and cons. Um, so that whatever the outcome of the referendum is, we can find a positive way forward. Uh, look, I've found it fine. I, I guess I've always 
uh, spoke about drug law reform um, before I was elected um, and uh, as a new MP um, I had articles published in, in magazines uh, advocating for sensible drug law reform. Um, so it's not much different in this instance because I do see this as a sensible step forward. Awesome. Yeah, I, I, I haven't actually come across anyone who's been against cannabis uh, when I've been talking about it, and it is something I've been actively talking about. I have focused on the university a lot, which probably has a lot to do with it, but um, I found that there's an overwhelmingly positive amount of people who, um, who are pro legalizing cannabis, or at least decriminalizing it. And you can watch the full episode at odt.co.nz. After the break on the south today, a southern school celebrates an artist in residence, and will these warm temperatures continue, or will winter weather mark the first day of spring? Find out soon. Garrett or Dunedin, delivering quality, stylish garage doors in Dunedin for over 17 years. New doors, replacement doors and maintenance are all part of Garador's quality service. Garrett or Dunedin offers a full range of modern quality doors to suit any home. Come visit the team. Do you know Youth Grow in North East Valley? It's an awesome plant nursery where young people can work and learn life skills. You can now order your vegetable seedlings, herbs, bulbs and shrubs over the phone or by email. Either pick up your order on Norwood Street in North East Valley or they can deliver to you. Look for Youth Grow Garden Centre on Facebook or visit youthgrow.org.nz. Happy gardening! If you're at risk of developing melanoma skin cancer, you owe it to yourself to have a mole map. Mole map is coming to your area. Phone today to make an appointment. It could save your life. Well, mate, I'm thinking about getting a new ute. A poorly maintained heat pump can lose up to 35% of its output. The Mr. Heat Pump Cleaner team are experts. Their specially developed chemical wash is totally biodegradable. Call Mr. Heat Pump Cleaner and get the job done by the professionals. Step into Shop on Carol and discover a shop full of treasures. We have a fantastic range of vintage and retro clothes, upmarket clothing labels, collectible items, beautiful jewellery, quality linen and the best range of vintage haberdashery. Wrens are Otago's painting, tiling and plastering experts. Offering a free measure and quote, Wrens is a name you can trust to get the job done right. Call Wrens today on 477-9384 or visit wrens.co.nz. Heaven Sent Pet Cremations knows that losing a pet is like losing a family member. And we have many special ways for you to keep their memory dear to your heart. From caskets, remembrance pendants, to remembrance spheres. Call Heaven Sent Pet Cremations today. Ah, TV. Our favourite babysitter. But it can be tough keeping up with what our tamariki are watching. Uh, luckily, the Broadcasting Standards Authority has made some smart changes to the classification labels. Ooh! Plus changes to the time of day certain rated shows will air and awesome new parental lock features, meaning your babysitter's job is safe. Find out more at safeviewing.co.nz. Thanks for staying with us. A Southland Primary School has been lucky enough to have an artist in residence for six months. The artist is helping Rumu, Rimu Primary pupils work together to create a new mural for the school. A creative grant from the Ministry of Education has allowed an artist to spend six months in residence at Rimu School just outside Invercargill. 
Her job is to guide the creation of a mural which the pupils will be able to look back on with pride. Um, we're aiming for bright colours and we're aiming for a proof that the kids have been involved because it's the kids' mural ultimately and it's my job to consolidate it all and make sure it looks nice. The new mural is to replace an old one painted by an artist from the local community. The old mural has since rotted and been pulled down. This time every effort is being made to have pupils of all ages contribute to the project. We've even had our five-year-olds on the rollers contributing, so oh, it's yeah. been children right across. It hasn't necessarily been our seniors that have pulled it together. After a lot of consultation with the community, the school board and the pupils themselves, the mural will feature a number of things from the school's past, as well as some outline images of the pupils themselves. And we did some silhouettes with Jemima in our class and that's what we have on now, black silhouettes. It's hoped the mural will be finished by the end of term. In Southland, the South today. This year's Dunedin Premier Club competition has been cut short because of COVID-19 restrictions. The competition, which finished its first and only full round on Saturday, included a match between Green Island and Dunedin at Miller Park. PD back at uh, Miller Park. We just witnessed a, an interesting game here, 24-14. to 14. Uh, Dunedin got up over Green Island. So I've got the two, probably the best players on the paddock today. Uh, first, I've got Sean Jensen. Mate, you had a big first half, four or five turnovers. Thought it was going pretty well. Tough old day at the end, though. Yeah, we've, we, every game we've had a good half, but we just seem to can't put an 80-minute performance on. But um, I can't fault the heart the boys are giving in every week. So, yeah, we, we're almost there. Mate, you were there or thereabouts. I mean, you, you got back. You got you, you scored two tries, a try on each half from from a kick from a kickoff turnover. You got down here, but you just couldn't get that last pass away. Yeah, no, it is. It's just those little one percenters that aren't going our way this year but um, again I can't fault the boys like they're giving everything in every week and I'll bring the oldest man in club rugby in Mark Reeve Dunn so mate um, you've got terrible memories of this ground from last year so I won't go through that intercept pass you threw late in the game but 24-14 it was pretty ugly from you guys yeah no I don't think uh, well, I thought credit to Green Island they put us under pressure and didn't let us do what we wanted to so it wasn't like we weren't executing they were just putting a lot of pressure and I think Sean touched on it like those boys are a quality team they'd win more often than not um, I think they've just had a tough run this year. But mate you're through now it looks like from what I've worked out quickly you're probably playing Harbour next week at home. Oh that's good news for us we just wanted to uh, to win this game so we get to go back to Sharp Park for another week and you know results going we could get there another week after that so uh, that's our focus. Okay thanks boys so there it is 24-14 Dunedin beat Green Island, Tyree 29-14 over Zingers, 23-20 Harbour over Alambra Union and 21-18 Kaika over Southern. That means that Southern um, and Harbour make that top six and poor old Alambra Union missed by three and they are gone they're consigned to the bottom three. We'll be back again with you next week. And now recapping tonight's top stories on the south today. More than 70 firefighters are struggling to control a large fire in the Mackenzie country which has been burning for more than 24 hours. Public transport users are being strongly encouraged to wear face coverings as part of the fight against COVID-19. And Dunedin's armed offenders squad swooped on Mosgiel after a young man allegedly made threats to shoot police. Two people are now in custody. And now for a look at what's happening in tomorrow's ODT, we have Hayden Meikle with us this evening. Go to Hayden. Good evening, Simon. How are you? I'm well. Thanks. How are you doing? Excellent. Well, what a, what a day it's been. I mean, as we saw earlier, this the big fire up in the Mackenzie country still going, obviously. I think 17 helicopters at one stage. Mm. But boy, oh boy, today was fire, fire central, yeah, left, right and centre. Uh, Omaru fire, Outram fire, Lee Stream, the Matolda paper mill, a bit of concern about a fire down there. Uh, Beaumont, it just seemed to be constant, really, and you sort of feel for our... Our fire services, my goodness, today that warm wind had picked up a little mm. bit, making things really tricky. So we'll have the works tomorrow, really, reports from all over the district and the latest on all of those fires. Also, of course, the this incident out at Mosgill today, um, quite frightening, I think, for some people. The, the man arrested, threatening to, to shoot police um, at a local supermarket, all sorts of um, excitement out there, so we'll have the latest on that. Interesting story about a Dunedin man who had to wait nearly three hours uh, for an ambulance, and we look at... We asked St John what the story with, with that was. Yeah. 
Uh, Aucklanders arriving in Queenstown, as we all know. Today, Auckland went down to level 2.5, I think they're calling it. Yeah. And lots and lots and lots jumped on a plane and decided to come to Queenstown. Mm. So we're looking at the issue of... Uh, there's a conference in Queenstown, and Auckland is coming to the conference, and how are they going to sort of police that? So I think there'll be a lot of interest uh, in the coming days over refugees from Auckland coming down to this part of the world and hopefully not spreading COVID-19 with them. And a really interesting sports story from the weekend, uh, Robbie Johnston, a uh, Otago Olympian, I think he went to two Olympic Games, yep. was disqualified from the New Zealand Cross Country Challenge at Chisholm Park at the weekend for spitting. Uh, given the climate, I suppose, with COVID, rules against spitting. Oh. Uh, we had a chat to him today to see what he, he thought about it, but that'll be another story that'll create quite a, lot of, uh, quite a lot of interest, I think. So all that and all sorts of other bits and pieces to keep people reading. Great, Hayden. Thanks very much. Excellent. Now time for a look at the weather. Tonight's weather proudly brought to you by Mole Map. Beginning with the Southern View, soon to be passengers awaiting their ride at Dunedin's bus hub. Looking at the situation, a very cold Tuesday ahead with snow to low levels, inland clearing and significant frosts tomorrow night. Starting at the northwest of the South Island, Greymouth and Westport, sheer rain and 13 degrees. Across to the northeast, Nelson and Blenheim are paired up too. It's rain and 16 degrees for you both. Moving down to Canterbury, tomorrow's looking less pleasant the further south you go. Rain for all. It's 13 degrees for Kaikoura, 9 for Christchurch and just 6 degrees for Ashburton. To the southern towns, all getting the same treatment tomorrow as its moderate southwesterlies becoming fine and 7 degrees for everybody. The Catlins, Balclutha, Lumsden and Gore. In central Otago, southwesterlies across this area should ease tomorrow with snow clearing. Still winter temperatures for the first day of spring, Wanakura on 5, Queenstown just 4, Alexandra up to 6 and Tiano, a relatively balmy 8 degrees. To the northern towns, decreasing southwesterlies across this region as Timaru and Awamaru on the coast contend with sleety showers and 8 degrees. Just 5 degrees inland, but snow clearing for both Twizel and Omarama. In Dunedin, rain tonight with strong cold southwesterlies and a low of 4 degrees. Showers tomorrow and very cold, even hail and sleet are possible. It should clear during the afternoon though with fresh gusty southwesterlies easing. A high of 7 and a low of 2. Mostly fine and sunny on Wednesday with light westerly winds. A high of 11 getting down to 1 degree at night time. And in Invercargill. Sleety showers tonight with a few snow flurries possible. A predicted low of 3 degrees. Sleet and snow clearing tomorrow with sunny periods increasing during the day. It's very cold with gusty southwesterlies decreasing and frost overnight. A high of 8 and a low of 0 degrees. Wednesday lightens things up a bit with sunny periods and some cloud and moderate to fresh cool westerlies, a high of 12 and a low of 8 degrees. That's the news this Monday. For the latest news from the southern region, head online to odt.co.nz or follow Channel 39 on Facebook and YouTube. Have a great evening. Ka kite anō. This bulletin proudly brought to you in association with Alex Campbell's menswear. Supporting local content so you can see more of New Zealand on air.